it's special, as I said, and wonderful, because this year we are not going to present to you one guest, no, not even two guests, but we are going to present three guests this evening on our talk show. Yes, our honourable and esteemed guests will be telling us all a little bit about what Christmas means to them and what is special about Christmas to them. So, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you firstly, Sister Rachel Buskern. <laughs> Thank you all for coming this evening. I would say it's wonderful to be here on this talk show with all of you. Thank you. Right, now, of course, we're going to enjoy the, some very interesting topics of the discussion, but before that, I think it would, of course, be fair for you to introduce yourselves to all these lovely ladies and gentlemen here. So we'll start with you, Sister Rachel. Would you please introduce yourself briefly? Hi, I'm Rachel Baskaran, and I'm an insurance consultant. Hi. Right. Wow. And Sister Nicole. Hello, my name is and I'm a teacher. Right. Yeah. Doctor? Hello everyone, I'm Sui Ying, I'm the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm sure you're all looking forward towards the time of Christmas now, right? Yes. Wonderful time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, let's talk about, you know, the things that Christmas brings. When Christmas comes, you know, we see people walking around and you know, they always seem so excited, anticipating Christmas, looking forward to what Christmas will bring. So, the key word here is looking forward. So, what makes you look forward to Christmas, sisters? What do you like doing around the time of Christmas? Sister Rachel. Yeah, well, for me, when there's Christmas season, I love going to the malls. You know, there are beautiful decorations there, and I love to go and see those decorations, uh, and also, of course, shopping. Shopping for? Yeah, gifts and cards, Christmas cards for my friends and family, and of course for my customers too. Ah, I see. Well, I can't exactly agree with you on that. Expenditures are high when you go shopping for that many yeah. things. Oh. Yes, yes, that's right. But normally I set aside, uh, you know, some a sum of money to spend for it. No wonder you're a consultant. Yes, yes, Truly yes, an expert yes. at that. <laughs> now, Sister Nicole, how about you? What do you look forward to about Christmas? To me, Christmas is about food. Food. <laughs> <laughs> Truly Malaysian. Wonderful. Yes. We are Malaysians. We love to eat, right? Yeah. And, and we Malaysians, we love to eat as well. I like to throw parties. Mm. And parties. And of course, going for parties as well. So that I can enjoy wonderful food as well, right? Right, so when you throw a party, we are all invited, right? <laughs> ah. So you like the, the food part of Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, that's great. It's wonderful. And Dr. Sweeney, what about you? What makes you look forward to Christmas? What do you like doing? Uh, Christmas caroling, because it just brings joy to people. You know, the singing and the joyful situation that it brings, uh, the situation that the environment of Ah yes, nothing warms the heart like people coming to your house and singing, right? Singing cheerful Christmas songs. Yes, Christmas is really a season of joy. I'm sure we all can see during the celebrations, during the gatherings, or during the makan time, as you said, Sister Nicole, how happy the people are to be gathering and enjoying themselves. But other than just experiencing the joy, I think Christmas is also a time when we should spread the joy, right? We also should bring joy to others. So. What would you think are practical ways? How do you do this spreading the joy to the people you care about? Sister Rachel, what do you what do you do? Well, as for me, I told you I love shopping, so I buy gifts for my uh, family and friends and customers, right? And I love seeing those faces when they open up the presents, especially the kids. Uh, when you get the kids and the big ones too. <laughs> of course, sometimes you get you see adults who are overjoyed, you know, to see certain presents. So it's really a joy to me to see them. Especially if it's something they've been looking forward to, right? Yeah, they've been looking forward to getting something and then they open it. Oh! <laughs> that expression on their face is fun yeah. seeing, yes. And Nicole, how do you spread joy to the people around you? Mm, let me think. I think it's very simple. It's to just encourage, talk to each other, uh, spreading happiness. I mean, seeing something happy, positive, and say, God loves you. Uh, 
sharing sharing positive things to your family members. Mm. I'll give you this something to look forward to the next year. Yeah, New Year's resolution, right? <laughs> yeah. Or else or else like it's Christmas time, be happy, yeah. Forget about all the things behind, right? Yeah. That, that's a that's a good thing, yes. And Dr. Sreen, how do you spread the joy of Christmas? Well, I, for me, I mean, uh, for those who friends that we Oh, that's a good thing. You remind them that they're being cared for, yeah. Especially if they work during Christmas Day, right? Yeah, if you're working during the holidays, just for someone to tell them that if someone remembers them. I think that would be a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful feeling. Yes. All right. Now, here's the most important question. You know, the first six letters of Christmas actually represent the whole meaning of Christmas. I think C H R I S T, Christ. However, we know that the world nowadays is just trying to get rid of this thing. They even put X at the front of Christmas to replace the Christ and then Xmas. Because actually we know it's Christmas because it's about Christ. So, since we all are aware that there's a meaning to Christmas, what is the, what is the most meaningful thing about Christmas to you, Sister Rachel? Well, for me, the meaning of Christmas, of course, as you say, is Christ, right? Because Christ brings, brings hope for us, for his people, for yes. the children, I know, for his creation. So when Christ came to this world on Christmas Day, that means there is hope for each and every human on earth. Yes. You know, give back our, uh, I mean, we get back our life, yeah. the real true life that we're supposed to have. That's right, yeah. that's right. True. It's about hope. Nicole? comes to bring peace. We need to say that um, brothers can talk to sisters, no fighting, no like ah, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, husbands can talk to wife, uh, uh, my auntie can talk to my uncle, <laughs> you know, all these kind of things. We don't like see each other and then we quarrel, we see each other and we run away. No. When peace means everyone can talk to each other. A uh, season of reconciliation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. As if God reconciled the man through the birth of Jesus. That's very good. And you, Dr. Sweeney? Mm. Well, Jesus is mother. Amen. And, uh, no, we should love those who are those people that we find difficult to love. Yeah, that's true. I mean, when God sent Jesus to this world, He really had to give a lot of love to some people who weren't very worth loving at all. But that is truly very good, your statements of the meaning of Christmas. These are all truly expressive statements of the meaning of Christmas. So I'd like to thank you all for your heartfelt testimonies and sharing about the meaning of Christmas. And I'd like to thank all of you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, for paying attention. Truly, it's been wonderful to know about the meaning of Christmas as shared by these three lovely sisters. So once again, I'd like to thank you for your time on this show. And to all of you, I hope you have enjoyed the wonderful time hearing from these three sisters about what Christmas means to them. And now we will invite another lovely sister, Sister Miriam, to come forward with a testimony also about Christmas. Let's welcome her with a big hand. I gotta say that I am quite underdressed. <laughs> Everyone looks so nice now. Right. <laughs> it's okay, it's still crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Right. Um, is everyone having a nice night so far? Yes. yes. There's a few people here. <laughs> we try to do better, okay? Right, uh, so I've been asked to give a testimony, and frankly, I thought about it the last few days, and I was stuck. Why? Because, honestly, God has done so many things in my life that for me to just pick one, right, it's like giving, uh, it's like doing a disservice to God. So what I decided to share about today is about His love. 
for me. So, as a backstory, I'll tell you about the more major things that have happened in my life. Um, as everyone has their own struggles, some people struggle with finances, some people struggle with um, relationships. Um, when, for someone like me, when I was 17, my dad became a stroke patient. Um, when I was, uh, sorry, I'm so nervous I wrote everything down. <laughs> uh, uh, when I was 19, my mom got diagnosed with anxiety and depression. It was during that time when I learned that I was adopted. And two years later, when I was 21, just a few months ago, I learned that I was actually purchased off a black market inventory. It is still a thing now, surprisingly. Um, but point is, I live a hard life, and I'm sure that there are people out there who have hard lives too. I'm sure everyone has their own struggles. And like I said, maybe you have financial problems, maybe you have financial problems. But the thing is, I can still stand here and tell you that God loves me as much as He loves you. Okay. So, you would think that someone like me, you know, um, at first glance, maybe before I told you about all of my life struggles, you would think that you know, I have a quite nice life, I have a nice phone, I have nice shoes, you know, um, maybe a bit underdressed, like, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, God put me where I am. God allowed me to experience all of these trials in my life so that I would be blessed. Amen. Amen, yes. <laughs> so you would think, why would God bless me? Why does God love me if He allowed me to go through all of these bad things in my life, all of these challenges? If you think about it, I'm 21. I don't have a degree um, because um, from my mom's issues, my dad's issues. We don't have enough finances to go through for me to get a degree. And that's okay. Um, if not for that, I wouldn't have learned how to rely on God for the many, many things in my life. Not, uh, you don't need a degree to be able to survive. You don't need money to be able to survive. What you need is God. I say this again and again because, okay, you would think, uh, okay, I have depression, and for me to admit this is actually so publicly, it's actually quite new. I uh, I did tell you all my life struggles, not all, um, but these are very tough challenges to go through, and it's not surprising that I would get uh, depression. And there are times where I felt like I beg God, I would cry at night, I would hug my pillow and beg God to take me away, but God didn't. And I'm grateful that among the many prayers that I've prayed, I thank God that He didn't answer that. If He actually answered that, I wouldn't be standing here today telling you about how great Jesus is. Uh, I wouldn't be able to show off my clothes. Um, <laughs> so, point is, if God can love someone as broken as myself, if God can arrange someone to be there for me every single time I wanted to die, God can love you. God will always, always be there with you. Um, this is basically what I want to share today. I hope you have been blessed. Uh, and I hope everyone has a blessing. Thank you.
without a friend or a dollar to their name. He draws his knees up to his chest and rubs his icy hands together for all. Another man walks past. He's dressed well, looks rich. He gazes at the homeless man strangely, a deep sadness building within his heart. Well, it is the Christmas season, isn't it? Turning back, he drops a dollar into the old man's cup before going on his way. And it's another new day. The birds are singing, the sun is shining. Well, actually not. It is actually raining cats and dogs. Everybody is running to get out of the rain and back to their warm, cozy houses. Now the man walks past again. As usual, he's wrapped up like a dumpling, warm and well shielded from the rain and cold. And there he sees the homeless man again, hungry, desperate for shelter and security. This time, not even the old rag will keep him warm. It's soaked through. The man's guilt and sadness increases. How can he not do anything? The poor man needs help, yet there is nobody around to help him. No place he can go to. He looks down at his coat. It's expensive, warm, waterproof. His favorite coat. He can't give it away. He looks at the homeless man shivering in the hall. Sighing, the man takes off his coat. And he drapes it around the homeless man's shoulders. As he does so, the homeless man looks up, confused. What's wrong with this generous fool? He feels deeply grateful as the man jogs away. And it's now Christmas Eve. The streets are empty, everybody is home enjoying themselves. Light shines through the windows along the street. Christmas trees are decorated, presents are being opened. And along comes the man, walking down the street with a parcel under his arm. He's trying to get home fast to the delicious Christmas dinner waiting for him. There sits the old man in his usual spot, still homeless, still hungry, still without hope. He tries to walk away, but his conscience won't let him. He needs to do something, once and for all. He can't walk away again. Turning around, he hurries over to the homeless man and starts helping him up. The homeless man looks up at him. What are you doing? he asks. Hurry, come home with me, the man says. It's cold out here. I'll get you some good food and warm clothes. In a daze, the old man staggers to his feet and limps alongside the man down the street into his home. There he is served a hot meal and given new clothes and treated as another member of the family. with the best dinner he's eaten in a while. He's taken to the living room to sit and have a hot drink. As the man goes to have a quick chat with his wife.
he returns to the formerly homeless man. My wife has prepared a room for you, he says. Stay for as long as you wish. We welcome you as part of our family. Soon I shall seek out a job for you. And meanwhile here is some money for you to buy what you wish. The homeless man looks at his kind host and bursts into tears. Why are you doing this for me? He asks with tears running down his cheeks. You don't know me. I don't need to know you to be kind to you, the man explains to him. But there is someone who knows you more than me. He lives in us. He is the real gift of Christmas. A gift that lasts forever. A gift of hope. Let me tell you about this other man who's done even more for all of us. Christ, the hope to the hopeless, bringing love, 
joy and peace to all mankind. He came to love and to show us how to love. This is the story of Christmas. It is a story of love. Thank you. Thank you.